It's me. Quick tip out there to you. It's a tip on how to use Thor as a multi-effect. If you route Thor up correctly uh, within your track, you can use it as a kind of phasey, flangey, delay-y type of filtery type effect. Um, it's got three, well, I just hit the mic. It's got, I'm a pro. It's got three uh, different effects there that you can that you can use kind of in conjunction um, to take maybe a synth or something. And, you know, it's going to go into the next section of the song. So you want it to kind of phase into the background. Uh, this is what I would reach for, for that effect. So it's actually really handy, really super useful. And I pack it into a rack and then I can just slap it on anything. And with a little bit of automation, have that desired effect. So anyway, let me show you. Okay, so here we have a track uh, I've been working on uh, where I use this multi-effect. Um, it's a track, if you've been following uh, my other tutorials, it's a track you've heard before, but I added a whole bunch to it. I added a bass line and this bridge section, and actually just, it's almost done actually. But uh, here, take a listen, and uh, you can hear the effect in context.
Anyway, you get it. Of course, the computer would slow down right there. But uh, anyway, you get it. Um, it is on this track that I use the effect. Here it is in context. So I'll show you how it was made. So it's this Thor. Now I, I did actually add a couple of other things after the Thor, but we'll just concentrate on what the Thor is doing. We'll bypass these. So it's going out of this plucked, this, this pluck channel and into the Thor and then the Thor, I'm sorry, and into the Combinator and then the Combinator is routed to the Thor. Now, so it's just going into the audio inputs of the Thor and then the audio outputs of the Thor could just be going straight back in. We're gonna ignore these for now. So the trick to it is in the routing. You have to route it here in the mod matrix by selecting the audio inputs. So audio input one, and audio input two, go into filter three. So we're not, the other thing to note is that we're only using this section of the Thor. Everything else is to do with synthesis. Well, actually not these two filters, but for all intents and purposes, they are. Um, so everything's routed. The inputs are on filter three. So it goes from the amp to filter three, and then from filter three to these two, to these two effects. So it, it's, when I kind of realized that, that that's how the Thor is just routed, and I knew that you could run audio through Thor, you know, to affect, the, affect it with a filter. Um, I didn't think about, well, I, it was at that moment I thought about the fact that these two effects are stacked behind it. So we have a filter that can be delayed and chorused. So that, that's a nice effect for getting things to disappear, to kind of smear them out of the image. Um, so that's what I did. I made this and then I realized since I was building a combinator that I could add a couple other things to spice it up. For instance, the delays can be too in your face. So a little bit of re reverb comes in. I almost called it reverb. <laughs> a little bit of reverb comes in. And then the other thing that comes in is a filter because the delay taps can be a little bit too in your face frequency wise. So I have this whole thing set up to one macro here. And if you look, the filter actually goes in a negative direction. So it starts high and goes low so that as your delays come in, they get filtered down. So, and then everything else filters up. So if you look, you can actually see things move. If I, nope, wrong one, that one. If you watch me move this knob here, you can see this knob here moves. Here, I'll just highlight this area here. And then you can see everything that moves when this one knob moves. And that's just due to going in and routing it. You know, you go to the Thor and you say, I want this knob to move. That's filter three frequency, okay. Rotary one, filter three frequency. I want it to start at zero and I want it to go not all the way to the top. That's the other thing that's cool about setting up macros like this is that they're scalable. Um, so yeah, I really just sat here um, and painstakingly picked a setting that will work for most things. And then um, if you are, if you're using this effect and you found that one of the parameters was a little bit too wild for you, or maybe you want that filter to filter down a little bit more, it's just as easy as, let me find the section. Let me just do this. I'm holding alt, I'm holding option and clicking to make the left locator be there. And then you can press command and click to make the right lo locator be there. Nice little tip, hitting L to loop. So as we're listening, let's say we decided that's, that's, that sounds really cool, except for that I want it to filter down a little bit more because that's just, just too much. We could just go to the programmer, we find the filter, and then instead of having it 
go from high down to 91. We could have it go from 127 is the max. Having it go from the max even lower. Let's have it go to 84. Couldn't really hear the difference there, but so let's make it go crazy. Make sure it resets. Oh, it would help if I uh, unbypass the filter. <laughs> uh, let's turn these back on. That's funny. Okay. So you see, and before it was up here somewhere. So you can hear the difference there, now that everything's on. Uh, <laughs> and then you can actually watch, uh, just so you can see how it's, it's live, you can watch it happen. And uh, that, that's all based on including this dry wet for this reverb moves. If you watch it again, that moves too. All of those movements have been assigned to this one macro. So if you, if you download this, uh, the link is in the description. If you download this, uh, this combinator, which you can, I got it all packed up and looking all nice and neat for you. Uh, you'll be able to just slap it on anything and just turn that knob to get that effect. So um, that's how I made it and that's where you can get it and that's where I use it. Um, I'll show you one more time in context. Just to make sure you got it, I will delete this, delete that. And then let's say this is your track. Oh, let me uh, solo it actually. This is your track. This is the spot you want that effect to happen. I'll walk you through how I'd slap it on real quick. So it's not there. So I just go here. Boom. You could actually just in this case, slap it right in there. Actually, no, you don't want to do that. Actually, I'm glad I did because you lose the combinator. You, you lose the macro knob. So you don't want to do it that way. Actually, you want to hold shift and drag it in. Boom. It didn't route itself and it also didn't create a mix channel for the combinator and then you just route it like so here i'll hit k so that you can get the cable clutter out of the way that's how i remember it clutter with a k get the cable clutter out of the way uh and then you're gonna have this combinator as your insert boom just like so and then you could literally just grab this edit automation change the color because i like my automation lanes to be graphite and then I would get rid of the uh, lane that's for MIDI. Get rid of that. I'm only gonna affect this lane. I could do, here I'll show you even the kind of slick way to get this automation done. You could just, boom, make a quick automation curve that goes from low to kind of high. Then you want it to stretch, hold option over this amount of time. Actually, you want it to kind of do maybe something like this and then go on for a little bit. Boom. Cool, sounds pretty cool. That was quick. So we're already close to, let's say this is my first time hearing it, we're already close to what I, was, what I had in my head for, for how I wanted this pluck to go out. Cool, now the only thing I would change here is that I think the, the filter could go down a little bit more. Since I use this, this, uh, this plugin all the time, I know it's right here. 
Boom, bring it down a bit. I kind of know that that's where that's gonna sound good because once again, sorry, because once again, this is just a quick plugin that I can just reach for, you know, and I just do all the time. Perfect. And that sounds the way I wanted it to sound. And if there was another element that maybe there was, uh, you know, I don't know, another synth or maybe the bass itself that I wanted to just have that quick effect on, I could slap that on that really quick. And you can see how it's just a great workaround, a great, um, not a workaround, a great, a great, hmm. You can see how it's just a great workflow hack. So there it is. Grab it down in the description. You can just download it for free from my website. Um, or you can make it on your own if you were following along. Um, either way, I hope you learned a little bit more about Reason, and uh, I hope this helps you out with your uh, with your production endeavors. Peace.